going on everybody welcome back into the channel today we are here with another deck list video as we continue to get ready for the launch of star wars unlimited we're gonna continue on with the way that we did it last time we're gonna go over my deck list we're gonna go over why i play the cards in the deck list what you could possibly uh replace in the deck and what i think could be like good replacements for these things right and then we're gonna go into another uh force table uh, example yes we know that it's not the best example or way to kind of showcase each deck because the ai is not really the brightest but people seem to enjoy at least giving some type of visual aspect of the game and the deck being played so i'm going to go ahead and continue doing that um i want to also thank you guys for the support lately we reached 700 subscribers on the channel as we continue our uh march to 1000 uh again thank you for everything you guys have shown all the support it's greatly appreciative and all the comments whether it be good feedback or bad feedback i want to hear it all i Definitely take all of the feedback into consideration when making these videos. I would not have added Force Table into the video if someone didn't suggest it, suggest it. And again, I'm just trying to make the best content I can for you guys. So any suggestions that you guys have, throw them my way. Uh, and I'll do my best to accommodate any type of suggestions that you guys have. Um, today, we are going to be going over our Hera decklist. Now, Hera is a very unique leader, uh, being that she doesn't have like, an action ability. But... She also allows you to play aspects outside of your colors, which is kind of cool. So with that being said, let's go over Hera and her leader ability. Her leader ability ignores the aspect penalty on Spectre cards that you play, right? So that includes, like, if, let's say that I'm just playing green Vigilance, right? I'm playing Command Vigilance, and I want to play, um, let's just say, Sabine, and she's an ag aggression card, right, as we know. We can still play that without an aspect penalty. So... That's really cool. She's very unique in that aspect. And then she has her epic action that for six, if well, not for six, but if you have six resources, you can go ahead and play her out as a leader unit. And while she's a leader unit, she uh, on attack gives unique units an experience token. So that's pretty good. The way that I like to play uh, Hera is the main thing is, is like I have a lot of Spectre units in this deck just to kind of use that engine and just kind of do it for fun. Like Hera is in no way a super competitive deck in terms of like you're not going to be taking these and this deck list and then going to beat all the high tier units and leaders right you're not going to go in here and expect to win every single game against sabine against leia darth vader you know those guys boba fett like those those four decks and luke as well are probably like the the top tier decks and though this deck can surprise those decks at times like you have to draw and play really really well you have to draw the right cards at the right times and play really really well like this is just more of a deck that is fun like i wish Hera was super competitive she's just not as fast as a lot of those decks and then other decks just kind of like as the game progresses their deck is able to do higher things than this deck is able to do but again i still have a lot of fun with this deck um it's a deck that in my opinion you want to try to get as many units out on the board as possible and kind of try to keep them there. So uh, that is in regards to the Spectre units that you're going to be playing because their effects and their abilities are fun to use. A lot of them are on attack uh, effects, but we're going to go over them and kind of go over how this deck is played. And then again, go into a force table matchup against Thrawn because we're just going to try to keep it in the theme here, right? What better way to show off a Hera deck than against Thrawn, right? So with that being said, that is the leader we're going to be playing. Again, I like playing Hera. She's a lot of fun, but I just don't think it's like super super competitive but again in a fun aspect and then also like in the multiplayer when the multiplayer rules come out this deck might actually do really well in that like this leader because it's just more of like a, a long game type of thing right uh let's get into our base here we have our energy conversion lab um it's just really good yes i said we wanted to play the long game so maybe playing a 30 hp base is a little bit better but the ambush on a six cost or less is actually really good at a couple units in this deck and i'll kind of go over them as we get there but i typically like to play when i'm playing green as my base and as you see here we're playing double green okay so and i'll explain why i do that as well uh as the deckless uh, video continues right but for the most part getting that ambush on one of your units for a certain thing you can go ahead and take out a certain unit there are units in this deck that on attack they have on attack abilities and to be able to get that when you first play them is really good in my opinion so again i like the ability to get ambush on a card once in a game because it can come in clutch in certain situations 
So let's go ahead and get right into our ground units here. You're going to see we have a ton of ground units. Uh, it's again, I I try to focus this deck on the Spectre uh, aspect of it. So each of the Spectre units, I'm going to be playing three of. And what that also does for you is that uh, sometimes you'll get multiple of the same Spectre in hand and it makes it kind of easy when at least when they're the more expensive Spectres. Um, it's a little bit easy on choosing what cards go into the resource pile. So it just, it is what it is. So let's go ahead and talk about the first card here. We have Chopper. Everyone loves Chopper, the little robot. Um, he is a one cost. He is a uh, a yellow uh, cunning unit, right? But the thing is, is that it doesn't matter because we are playing Hera. So the aspect penalty does not apply to Chopper. Uh, while you control other Spectre units, it gets braid one. So that's pretty good because our goal in this deck is to flood the board with multiple Spectre units. We want to get all five of them out on the board at once. That would be kind of cool, right? Um, but yeah, there's that. And then on attack, discard a card from the defending player's deck. If it's an event, exhaust a unit resource uh, that player controls. So that's actually really good. I'm not going to lie. Every time I play this deck, I never hit a resource on this. But if you, I mean, I never hit um, an event. Uh, on the discard, but if you can, being able to exhaust other players' resources is actually really, really good because let's just say on turn, right, it plays on turn one. and turn two, you swing in there, you get an event, it discarded, and you exhaust a resource, making it so they only have two resources. That sets them back a turn because they're not able to play a three-cost unit or a three-cost event on turn two where you are still able to. And that's how you kind of get the ball rolling in this deck to kind of give you the upper hand early and just kind of, you know, try to keep things on your side of the board and try to use that Spectre synergy as you continue on here. But, uh, but uh, Chopper is a lot of fun because you can also have some discard, right? Next card here, we have Alliance Dispatcher. Nothing more than just, uh, it's a one drop. And for an action, uh, play a unit from hand for one less cost. The reason why I play this card, I play it as a three of, and I play it as a two of, Sorry, um, I played it as a two of, but mainly I play it because being able to play cards from your hand for one less cost when you want to get as many units on the board as possible is really good. Let's just say you want to go ahead and uh, it's turn four and you have Sabine and Ezra um, in your hand, right? Well, turn turn three, you have four resources, right? You can go ahead, you can use your Alliance Dispatcher, you can drop down Sabine, and then after that, drop down Ezra, and then, you know, because you have enough resources. So when you have four resources, you're able to play five resources worth of uh, units in this deck, and it's just really good synergy with what you're trying to do, because again, you're trying to get multiple units uh, with that Spectre uh, tag on it, right? Let's go into our next card. We have Mon Mothma. When played, search top five cards your deck for a Rebel, reveal it, draw it. Uh, put the other cards in the bottom in a random order, right? That doesn't really matter. But um, the Mon Mothma card, uh, that's really just being able to search your deck for the uh, Spectre units, in my opinion, at least for the way that I play it, just for fun, right? Uh, being able to play this and get a search. One, you're thinning your deck. Two, you're getting the card that you want. And then, you know, it's just good. It's a two cost. It allows you to search on turn one if you want to, which I typically like to do because then I get the card that I want in my hand at any point, right? I mean, at the very beginning. So Mon Mothma is just good. It's a good search card. Search top five cards, get a rebel. Simple. Let's go into one of the best cards in the deck, in my opinion. Sabine Ren, very unique. It is an aggression card that we play in the deck. Again, aspect penalty do not apply, um, but it's a two cost and it's a two, three. While there's at least three aspects among other, they have to be other friendly units, this unit cannot be attacked. That's actually really good, right? So if you have Chopper and you have, uh, let's say, Zeb or Kanan, you're able to kind of get around having this card being attacked. And on attack, you may deal one damage to a defender or to a base. That's actually really good, right? Um, you have to attack the defender to do one damage to it. Like, you can't attack the base and then ping a defender. But even if you're using this card to attack a defender, you can ping the base. So that's what makes it unique. You want to try to keep this on the board as much as possible because you can just continue to tap the base. Like even if you're attacking into other units to try to clear them out, it's just a very good card and being able to protect itself from being attacked is also very good. Next card, we have Ezra Bridger. Uh, Ezra Bridger is a three cost uh, cunning unit and it is a three, four. 
When this unit completes an attack, looks top card of your deck, you may play it, discard it, or leave it. So that's really good because um, if you attack without using your resources for the start of the turn, you could potentially play something from the top of your deck that's actually really solid, right? You can get access to cards that you don't even have in your hand through this card, which is why it's pretty good. It's unique. It's a lot of fun. I just hope that they <laughs> announce an Ezra, like an older Ezra card, because I'm not a huge fan of young Ezra, uh, but I understand uh, why they chose to do young Ezra here, because it's like a nice tricky card. It's a lot of fun. It's a good, good card, and it is a Spectre unit. So as you see the theme here, we play three fleet lieutenants. Now fleet lieutenants are always good. Uh, all of the Spectre units are rebel units as well. So this does synergize very well with it. You know, when played, you may attack with a unit. If that unit is a rebel unit, it gets plus two on this attack. Just good. If you need to get damage on the base quickly and you want to also get down a unit, you can go ahead and play this down, get a buff on one of your rebels, and then go ahead and attack into the base. It's just good. Also, you can use it to attack over something because there are a bunch of cards that help uh, units when they are damaged in this deck. So I'll kind of go over those when we get there. But again, Fleet Lieutenant in a Rebel-centric deck is always good. Animal Akbar. Now, I use this card as a removal card uh, because, again, we tend to have a lot of ground units on the board at a single time. And if your opponent's not taking care of those ground units, then it gets to a point where you have a ton of them you can go ahead and drop Admiral Akbar and do potentially like four or five damage to a unit. That's typically how I end up using this card. And it works very well and also has Restore. So it allows you to kind of prolong the game a little bit when you attack with it because you get to heal one from your base. And it's just pretty good because it's a removal card that this deck doesn't have a ton of. Uh, next, we have Echo Base Defender. Now, the reason I play three of this is because the Sentinel allows you to try to keep your Spectres on the board as long as possible. If you are afraid that you're going to lose one of your units, drop this down. Uh, and as long as they're trying to get rid of your units through attacking them, they won't be able to get to them unless they have Saboteur, right? So Sentinel is just very good in trying to protect your Sentinel, oh, no, Sentinel, so your Spectre units. That's kind of how I use it in this deck. But again, Sentinel is also a good way to protect your base as well. Because again, this, uh, these games are going to last longer than, you know, your aggro games with this deck, you know? Get into the next card here. We have Kanan Jarrus. Kanan Jarrus is always fun. Kanan Jarrus is actually one of my favorite characters from the Rebel series. I'm a huge Rebel series fan, and Kanan Jarrus, I love the character. Uh, with that being said, though, it is a four cost and it's a Vigilance unit. But again, you know, back on it. Spectre units, aspect penalties do not apply. Uh, it is a four, five. On attack, you may discard a card for the, from the defending player's deck for each friendly Spectre unit you have. There was a time when I had, like, I was discarding four cards a turn through attacking. And then among those cards discarded, depending on how many aspects are among those cards, you get to heal one from your base for each one, right? So I'm healing like three uh, from my base, discarding four cards. It's just really fun. If you can, again, if you can get the, the units on the board, this could be really good uh, for sure. Because one, you're healing a decent amount. And then two, you're having your opponent discard cards that they might need at that point. Because typically towards the end, the middle to the end of the game, a lot of hand sizes tend to be a lot lower, right? So if you're having them discard cards that they potentially need off the top of their deck, it kind of allows you to, you know, play around, have a lot of fun with that, and just kind of get in your opponent's head a little bit. Uh, I'm playing two General Dodona. The reason I'm playing that is because it gives Rebel units plus one, plus one. It is a four cost. A lot of the time, it comes down to, like, it's like an extra card. You know what I mean? Like, if most of the time I'm trying to play other cards over Dodona, but if I'm in a really good spot and just playing this is just like, you know, icing on the cake, I'll do that. If not, a lot of the times it does go down as a resource because you're trying to play your other cards before it. But I digress. It's a very good card to have in Rebel centric decks just because it is just free boosts. And then it kind of has your opponent trying to think like, should I try to target down Dodona while I'm, because if not, then you, all your Rebels are getting plus one, plus one. So it's kind of like that, that, thought process in your opponent's head that, hey, if I don't take that out, it could potentially be very devastating for me. And then we have Zeb as our final ground unit. And let's get back to our base here. Zeb is the perfect unit to use that base with, right? You go out, you play Zeb, 
with the uh, ambush, you take out an opponent's unit, and then you get to deal four damage to another ground unit. Another unit that's really good with that base is Kanan. I should have talked about that because being able to attack right when he comes out and to heal and discard, always good. But Zeb, I think, is the best unit in this deck for that because oftentimes, it, like by the time you are able to put out Zeb, they are, their units are either weakened or they don't have strong enough units to take a five hit, right? And then not only that, though, you get to deal four damage to another ground unit with that attack. So you could potentially take out a unit and then deal devastating damage to another unit, if not take out a second unit with Ambush. That's the main reason why I play that base, and Zeb is a great card for that. Um, using the Dona and using um, Fleet Lieutenant, you can kind of buff up Zeb to really take out units and stuff like that. It's pretty good. Uh, it's my highest unit, the like highest, highest cost ground unit. It's just a lot of fun. And again, we are going to go over the cards that could replace some of these cards because there are a decent amount. But again, this is kind of what I'm rocking with the ground units. My plan is to get all these Spectre units. I would love to have at any point Chopper, Sabine, Ezra, Kanan, Zeb, and also Hera on the board all at once because that would be a lot of fun. But most of the time I have three or four of these guys on the board when I'm playing against a game that like a match that takes longer, right? And a longer stretch match. And an aggression match, like when you're trying to go right at the base, you're not going to get all these units out there and you kind of have to play with it uh, how you can to try to get those wins, right? Now we're going to go over to space here. We don't have many space units, but the ones that we have, they're here to power up our, our homies here and uh, also try to buy us some time, right? So let's start off with Wing Leader. Wing Leader, as you guys know, it's a three cost. When played, two experience to a rebel unit. It goes really well with all of these Spectre units. Again, we're trying to make our Spectre units really strong, able to stay on the board, use their abilities, and kind of mess with our opponent as much as possible, right? Then we have Bright Hope. Okay? Bright Hope is a Sentinel for space. The reason I play three of these is because we don't play many space units, so we tend to keep space kind of open for our opponent. But if you can go ahead and play this, you can kind of ignore space for a little bit while you try to get your ground troops going. Okay, so I play this because it is a Sentinel. And then also, uh, when played, you may return a friendly non-leader ground unit to your hand, to the owner's hand, right? Because if you're playing the multiplayer mode, you can return your friends to your hand, but still. And that's how you get to draw a card. You want to have as many options in this deck as possible. So the draw power from this is really nice. Um, you, what I like to do is oftentimes return a Mon Mothma to my hand, or... If I'm, if I'm afraid that they're going to kill my Alliance dis uh, Dispatcher, I'm going to return that to my hand and protect it for the turn. Because again, I want to use the Alliance Dispatcher to put out my Spectre units for cheaper costs so I can play more of them each turn. But this allows me to kind of play around things and um, use things' abilities more than once. So you're looking at Mon Mothma being able to search and get Rebels back. You're looking at Admiral Akbar as well, being able to use that uh, ping removal damage again. Right? So let's say the turn before, you go ahead, you drop it, you did three damage or something, and then you play this next turn, and you pick up Admiral Akbar again to do that again. And in all of that, you're drawing a card. So it's just really good synergy with the deck. And then the main reason why it's here, though, is for that Sentinel in space to buy you more time. Now let's get into our final space unit. I originally did not have this in the deck, but after playing more and more, I realized how long each game was going as long as I was playing the way that I wanted to play. These games lasted longer than normal games, right? So I decided to put a couple home ones in there. The reason I play home one is because one, it gives you restore two. It gives every one of your units restore one. So again, as I talked about before, we are trying to get multiple units on the board. We're looking to get four or five units on the board. And if you have all those guys on the board, you're gaining five HP as long as you attack with all of them in the turn. And then also you're restoring two with this. So you could potentially get in that scenario, seven HP a turn. Uh, if because again that's going to be a little bit later you're going to be taken down to that point so it's a good way to try to sustain yourself for a longer game also because we do play a 25 hp base restore is always good but on top of that it has when played play a heroic unit from your discard pile and play it for three less so that's actually really good a lot of the cards in this deck would be played for free but then also you can play kanan for one you can play zeb for two, you can play General Dodona for uh for one, and then also Bright Hope if you want to get another Sentinel in space. 
that's pretty good because right you put this out there you you get your sentinel out there for the cost of one and then you now have protection for home one so it's on the field longer to allow you to restore a lot more i just think that this was a very good card i only have it as a two of because three i felt like a clock deck pretty good but two i think is really good you get this in the mid to late game and you can really help sustain your base and get more hp back and just again be able to play another unit onto the board pretty much for free for the most part so it's a very good card very fun card and it rounds out our space units next we are going to go ahead and talk about our events our events um we aren't playing any upgrades in this deck surprisingly enough and i'll kind of go over because there are a couple upgrades that you could argue would be very good in this deck but we're going to go over our events now and start off with uh metal ceremony now i thought i'll tell you this i thought that this was better than academy training now normally i would play academy training in this deck because getting plus two plus two for the cost of two is really good and you can argue that it should be in there you can take out something else in this deck unless you, or else you unless you want to play a 52 card deck 53 card deck that's up to you i'll just try to keep my decks as close to 50 if not 50. um but yeah so i play metal ceremony and the reason being is that again we are going to have a ton of units attacking in a turn and all of our units for the most part are rebels so if you attack with three guys and this is like to end your turn and it's free just one experience free on three of your units that attack they can't come in and get this um they have to have attacked to get the metal ceremony so with that being said uh, it's a free card that's the main reason why i played it over academy training because you're playing a ton of units you're spending three for one unit uh two for another you're spending a lot of resources just trying to get units on the board you might not have the resources to spend on academy training so i felt like this is a good way to power up those rebels for a free cost it's just a good way to get out more experience tokens i'm playing two spark of the rebellion well spark of rebellion um you know look at your opponent in hand this card a card from it that's very good especially when you're playing against a villainy green deck it's kind of annoying when they have overall mirage and take out like half your field so I like to kind of hold on to it to the point when my opponent does have five when I'm playing against that to see if I can get rid of an overwhelming barrage so I don't get blasted into oblivion. Uh, but again, this card is very good because not only can you get rid of a card, but it also gives you hand knowledge. So you can kind of play around what your opponent might be thinking. Um, it's just pretty good in that regard. Um, then we go into our next card. Also, it's a Spectre, it's a Spectre event, so you're not getting that aspect penalty. Next off, we have Arabast here. Uh, this is another card for removal. Uh, a friendly unit deals damage to an enemy unit equal to the amount of damage on it on the friendly unit plus one. So let's just say you have uh, Hera here. She's a leader unit. She has five damage on it. And then you can go ahead and play this and you can deal six damage to one of your opponent's units. It's a good way to get rid of units on your opponent's side of the board. Again, when you get all your Spectre units on the board, you kind of want to start playing and taking out your opponent's units once you get your your field set up this is a good way to go ahead and do that because a lot of the times your units are going to have damage on them when you're playing this deck uh it's just it is what it is with zeb you want to attack into things kanan's good at attacking into things and kind of healing up your base and stuff like that so like you're gonna have damage on your units use this to uh and use that damage for to your advantage right use it for removal Let's get into our final two, and they're going to be our resource ramping cards. I felt like they are were needed in this deck because, again, we are playing a ton of cards, and if we can get our resources out faster than our opponent, it's just really good. Uh, resupply, put into your, yeah, your resource pile. It does come in tapped or exhausted, but again, just getting that one resource faster than your opponent. So on turn two, you can play it, and then on turn uh, three, you'll have five resources, essentially. That's just really good. And then command. I play double green Hera basically for this. Being able to play this for floor cost is extremely, extremely valuable. Great value here. You get to choose two. You can either give two experience to a unit, so you're powering up your units, which is really good. You get to a friendly unit. It's a deal damage to your opponent's uh, unit equal to the amount of you know power it has. It's really good uh you can put in a uh, put this event into the resource pile so it's just resupply but you know 
it gets a second ability on top of that. And then return a unit from your discard pile into your hand. So if there's a unit that you want to get from your discard pile, and you feel the need that command, the best thing to do is to grab that unit from your hand. Let's just say it's a sentinel. Like you really need a sentinel. Play this, you can get that sentinel back from your discard pile. And then hopefully you'll have enough to play that as well on that turn. It's just a very good card, especially at four cost. That's immense value. And that's the main reason why I play Hera Double Green. Like you can argue that Hera with other colors might be better. But the fact that the way that I'm trying to play it is trying to utilize all the extra specters. I felt like this is a um, double green and being able to get the access to command at four cost was definitely optimal for me. And so that's going to do it for the actual deck list, the full deck list here. Um, again, we're about to go over cards that you can potentially put in this. I'm not saying this is the best deck list, but this is the way that I like to play it. And the main reason why is because I'm using all the characters from Rebels and the Spectre units. So it kind of gives me that, you know, that synergy, that deck theme that I'm that I'm going for. It's a lot of fun for me to play because, again, I'm a huge fan of Rebels. And this deck kind of allows me to play around with as many of my favorite characters from the show as possible. Right. Uh, let's get into the cards that you could potentially add into this deck um, that I don't have in it currently. So there we're going to start off with Attack Pattern Delta. We are playing double command, so it would be a three cost. That is crazy. It is really good to be able to give a unit plus three plus three, another unit plus two plus two, and another unit plus one plus one. I understand, and I probably should have it in this deck, but I opted not to put it in this deck because I tried to keep it at 50, and I don't know. I felt like Fleet Lieutenant was the cards that give power-ups, right? Fleet Lieutenant was better because I got to play a unit and attack in one turn. Um, you know, General Dodona, I could see taking out and putting, putting a couple of attack pattern deltas in there, right? Um, but General Dodona is actually kind of powerful because at a 4-4, he could do pretty good damage to someone's base and then also power up your unit. So I was trying to get things on the board that did more than just like the one thing, but again, being able to give three of your units that much power is actually really, really good. And now that I talk more about it, I probably should have them in the deck. I just don't at the moment. Good sideboard card. I might add it in, in a sideboard and add it in in a second matchup if I'm going up against something that I need to have extra power to go ahead and take them out. But for right now, Attack Power Delta is just not in this deck list, but it definitely could be. And I do not judge anyone that wants to add it to their deck. Another card that I was thinking about uh, adding is General Krell. General Krell is a new card that was just leaked. And when he's out there, again, another double command card. So it fits well in this deck. And for each other friendly unit, um, not for each, but each other friendly unit gains when defeated draw a card. Like I said, this, this deck loves to have that draw power when you have a ton of different options in your hands because you, like, you're playing so many different aspects and stuff like that. Like you just, you have so many options, but when you have those options, you can kind of play around what your opponent's trying to do. Um, General Krell, just having him on the board makes it so when people take out your units, you're drawing a card every single time. It's great. Um, the reason it's not in the deck list is because it literally just came out. Uh, and I just wanted to try to keep what I had going for the moment, but I could definitely see this deck going in, uh, this card going in this deck because it's a lot of fun. The potential to have that much draw power, it's just, it's just a lot of fun. So, General Krell, definitely consider that in this deck for sure. Continuing on, Vanguard Infantry, uh, when defeated, give an experience token out to a unit. This is a good way to get out an experience token while also having a unit on board. Um, and then you can also uh, patrol V-Wing for more of that draw power and the Star Viper for the ability to restore your HP when you, while you have the initiative. That's just good to prolong the game. Again, you're going to be going a little bit longer than most matches with this deck. So having that restore while you have the initiative is always good. Um, continuing on with cards that you can consider to play, uh, Strike True. Now, that is a really good card to play. I chose not to play it because I am playing Command, so I'm getting that ability anyway with another ability on top of it. So yes, I could play another three or two Strike True, right? And then I would have five different cards for removal, but being able to play Carabast and command for that removal. I thought that that was enough. Also having Admiral Akbar um, for another sense of removal. I thought that that was okay. So I felt like not needing two more strike true in this deck because then you're just clogging it up with the same abilities throughout, right? 
Uh, tactical advantage is another card you might want to consider because it's a one cost giving something plus two plus two. It's just good to do. You try to keep momentum and take out your opponent's units or attack into a base for massive damage. So tactical advantage. Uh, I can definitely see someone trying to put that in there. Um, and then, you know, a couple other cards, you know, we can have Archer D2, C3PO, you know that good combo, the, the, the good, the good, uh, search top card of your deck, and then, you know, adding it to your hand because you know what it is. It's a lot of fun. Also being able to power them up because they are rebel units. But again, I chose not to put them in here because we have so many different unique units that, with the Spectre units that I felt like going leaving them out was okay and then the final card i want to talk about is uh you are my only hope you're my only hope allows you to look at the top uh cards of your deck uh and then you may play it at a cost of five or less so you get to look at that top card right and then you get to play it essentially for free because there is only one card in this deck that's not five or less uh, which is home one. If you draw home one, then you have and you have enough resources to play it. So getting home one out for three is actually really good as well. But basically playing out that card to get out one of your units for free is really good because again, in this deck, you want to try to get as many units out on the board as possible. And to be able to play a card for less than what it costs is really good. So that's those are the cards that I can see really going in the deck. Uh, to replace certain things again i play a lot of what i play kind of goes around the specter engine you can argue that some of these specter units should be down to two ofs but i felt that for what i'm trying to showcase here having them as a three of to be able to have them in my hand at pretty much any time is like what i'm trying to do here trying to showcase the specter engine uh but again it's a lot of fun the deck's a lot of fun to me it's just not top top tier okay and some people just want to play the top tier if you're just looking for the top tier decks this in my opinion is not one of those top tier decks but it still is a ton of fun and i think in um multiplayer it could actually shine pretty well so with that being said we're going to go over to force table and show you the matchup between hera and thrawn to kind of give you the showcase of what this deck can really do so i'll see you guys over in force table all right, guys, we are here on Force Table to showcase the Hera deck. We are going up against a Thrawn deck because, you know, it keeps with the theme of Rebels. But also, I feel like Thrawn, this Thrawn control deck is a very good matchup for this deck. Because, again, we're trying to get as many of these Spectre units out on the board. And a lot of their effects are used through the on-attack effects, right? So Thrawn's ability to exhaust all of your units before they can attack, you aren't able to use all of your effects. But not only that, with the pairing up of Vigilance, you're able to use things like Vanquish, um, Power of the Dark Side, Take Down, to also take out a lot of the units that we do play on the board. So it does kind of get annoying to play against this deck. So I felt like it was a very good matchup to showcase here. Uh, yes, I do understand that Force Table does not have the best AI. But again, we're just doing this to showcase the deck and the synergy with the Spectre units and how we're trying to play the game, right? So still for fun. We're not going to take the Mulligan because we have Sabine here. We're going to throw down. And I think we're going to actually throw down to Dona because uh, when we get the four unit, four resources, we are going to play command as soon as possible. So let's go ahead and play Sabine Run. Let's grab initiative here. And so we get Spark of Rebellion, which is pretty good. Do I need to search my deck? That's something that comes down to. Do I want to discard something from his hand? Or do I want to do this? I think that either way we play it. I think we want to get either these one of these two on the board. So I think we're actually going to go ahead and I'm going to drop that. Yes, yes, I could have had hand knowledge. It would have been pretty good. But starting off, we have to attack because he will suspend my unit and I won't be able to get this damage off, right? And if he has power of the dark side, that could be really annoying as well. Um, I think I'm actually going to play Ezra here. Waylay. Great. <laughs> Grab initiative. Uh, okay, we have a lot of our Spectre units. I'm actually going to put down Mob Mothma. We're going to do this. We're going to give two... Whatever. That's fine. Uh, we're going to grab initiative now. Next turn, we should be able to get out Hera. We can get a couple more Spectre units. Um, 
and kind of go from there. We have home one. I'm going to keep that in my hand. I also want to keep this in my hand. I'm actually going to uh, Having Chopper, Ezra, Hera on the board seems pretty nice. Having this on the board could be really good as well. Um, wing leader is pretty good, right? So we have a lot of options here. I want to kind of keep this because I feel like we're in one right now. Thank you, Charles Dona. We'll, we'll put him down. And yes, I understand that the extra um, rebel like power experience is good. I should have attacked first, but I'm afraid that if I, you know, don't get things on the board, I'm actually going to attack with Hera right now and give the experience to Sabine just in case he tries to play something that he'll, uh, if he plays takedown and takes me out with five HP, it's gonna be really annoying. Let's go ahead and play Ezra. Yeah. See, that's what see, that's what I was afraid of, which is the main reason why I attacked with Hera there. Because with takedown, he would have been able to take out Sabine and we would have been in, you know, SOL. So that would have sucked. So let's go ahead and give Hera some more power up. And let's just pass turn because he grabbed initiative. And here we are. We have resupply, so that's pretty good. And Bright Hope. I think I am actually gonna play Bright Hope here. Yeah, let's do this. Get rid of Chopper. I know it kind of sucks, but I think I'm gonna put down both my Sentinels. Kind of buy me some time. So he's going to suspend right off the bat, right? We are going to attack, give another experience to our Sabine here. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead. Yep. So he comes out with that. He is going to suspend my wing leader, but I'm not too worried about that. We're going to just right away go ahead, play our um, thing there. He's going to suspend the wing leader. Fine. But he does take damage from our guy here. We do lose our Sentinel, but we do get to keep our guys a little bit stronger. And we are going to go ahead and play Bright Hope. And we are not returning something to our hand. I understand, like, drawing the card could be pretty good here. But we are not doing that. And Vanquish. <laughs> and we got another Bright Hope. Not that it really matters. He used Vanquish. And he could have used it on what I'm going to be playing next turn. I think what we got to do here is actually drop down resupply. We don't need to play it on a turn. And we're actually just going to first off attack with Sabine. Get that damage off. A solid good chunk of damage. Suspends my other wing leader. Fine. I actually think attacking into Ron here is smart. We're going to give the experience to Sabine. We're going to take out. And I, I know that takedown was going to be a thing, but let's go ahead and play that. Let's go ahead and play Ezra Bridger. Let's go ahead and grab initiative. We're still in a really good spot. The main reason why I did that, I knew the takedown could have been a thing, but now we have the ability to heal. We're also going to be able to pretty much take him out this turn. Um, I don't need to put down any resources because right now we are just going to go right off the bat, play a fleet lieutenant, attack with Sabine, and do a huge chunk. Does the one for free, does the nine, finishes off the game. So, as you see here, a lot of the Spectre Rebel engine kind of works really well together. Um, having to play around Thrawn's ability to suspend my units, and then also play around the ability with takedown stuff like that it, it becomes a lot because you want to have a lot of units on the board i wasn't able to get as many units as i wanted on the board but i still think they kind of showed how i want to play the game i want to have multiple specter units and then using hera to power up those unique units that i do end up using and so with that being said i want to thank you guys all for the support we hit 700 subscribers on the channel and i'm greatly appreciative of all you guys and all the support we've been getting uh we have only good things from here. After we do all these deck list videos, we're going to go ahead and put a, a final tier list before the um, the final game's release. We are going to continue game videos, uh, matchup videos. It's just we're waiting for Matt to come back. So when he comes back, we'll be playing more matchups. And, you know, when the game officially releases, we're going to do pack openings, uh, live streams. Those live streams are going to end up having some pack giveaways. So get ready for that. If you are enjoying the content, make sure you subscribe. If you are new and enjoying it here, I'm greatly appreciative of all you guys' support. And we're right around the corner from the release. We're 
right there. I really can't wait. I can't wait to see how the game plays. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here, and I'll see you guys next time.